Thank you everyone for uh, joining us on the Friday morning and thank you BSA for setting this up. And my name is Yuan, I'm a landscape architect at Payette. I'm a co-chair at BSA uh, Global Practice Network with Junko. Um, so I'll just start this by introducing our um, group a little bit uh, because it started a, a few years ago and then paused and we are resuming that right now this year and our committee um, is mis our mission is to connect professionals in Boston and around the globe for knowledge sharing, thought exchanging, networking, and showcasing all aspects of architectural and design practices. And we are a strong advocate for Boston's uh, collective talent. And we strive to help the community both at a firm level and at an individual level. So without further ado, I will let Junko introduce the content of this event. Okay, thank you, Yuan. Uh, my name is Junko Yamamoto. I am an architect and the co-chair of the Global Practice Network at Boston Society for Architecture. So first, thank, big thank you to Andrea and Momoyo and the audience for joining our virtual meeting today. And we will start with the presentation and followed by discussions. And we would like to um, open the conversation to the audience. So please um, have your questions ready to share during the discussion. Um, or you can send us uh, questions via chat anytime. And we also would like to encourage you to turn on your camera so that uh, we can see you and we can connect with you. So before we start, I would like to introduce the topic of our conversation. So today's discussion is on the topic of public space as social infrastructure. Uh, although the definition of public space may be ambiguous and the definition of social infrastructure can be very broad. So to make our discussions a little more specific, we are starting off with the idea that relates to uh, our experience of the COVID-19 pandemic. And for example, by, by now, um, maintaining appropriate physical distance has become one of the commonly understood protective actions against COVID-19. Uh, although we understand that there are many countries, um, it's difficult to maintain social distance due to uh, density and spatial limitations, as we discussed in the last event. So these protective, well, uh, these, uh, um, these visible demands, uh, such as maintaining physical distance and wearing personal protective equipment, is straightforward and would be temporary. But how about those that are invisible, such as the need for social connections uh, while physically distancing? So Eva Studio, uh, in their latest article, discussed the adjusted ways of using public spaces, including balconies, corridors, rooftops, and community gardens, which reinforced the social connections while quarantine. And well, at least in some countries in Europe, and some of these newly observed behaviors during the lockdown may be an opportunity to reimagine the role of such uh, social infrastructure. And we are using the term social infrastructure here in the sense that the public and semi-public spaces are providing social needs, meaning social connections. And how can these observations be utilized as a resource to inform the site-specific spatial solutions? And what are the implications for how we approach design in the future? So with these questions in mind, we will also talk about their projects. Um, so for the, for the audience, please um, have your questions ready uh, to share during the discussions, and or uh, you can always send your questions via chat anytime. So let's get started. I'll pass it on to you, Yuan. Yeah, sorry, I have to unmute myself. And um, so we will, I will introduce our first uh, presenter, um, uh, Angelia Nizzo from EVA Studio. Um, he is the co-founder of EVA Studio um, in UK. So prior to that, in 2004, he graduated in Milan Polytech. Polytechnic in 2000, 
and five, and he practiced as an architect in London and Rome. And he moved to Haiti in 2011 to assist the post-earthquake reconstruction, and during which he delivered uh, various urban projects in informal settlements. And since then, he returned to UK in 2016. He has been working on a project for refugees and host communities in uh, Lebanon, as well as um, different design schemes in London. So he's going to share his perspective as well as his project. Yeah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you both, Yuan and Junko, for the invitation. Um, and I'm very excited to be here. Let me see if I can share the presentation. Second. Can you see the screen? Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Can you see the screen? Yes. yes. Perfect. So I'd like to start my presentation with one of the many uh, photographs where we got used to seeing in the past months in the news, uh, and usually an empty Millennium Bridge or London Bridge. At the beginning of April uh, 2020, um, nearly 4 billion people worldwide, which is roughly like half the world population, was in a lockdown. With the prospect of months of um, self-isolation and quarantine due to the COVID-19 outbreak, many citizens feel, felt trapped within the constraints of the four domestic walls. Whilst the uh, application like uh, Zoom, like this one, or Asparty have thankfully helped people to reconnect, uh, to stay in touch with a group of colleagues or family or friends, uh, they cannot ultimately replace the opportunities that the city presents for real social interaction. Empty cities with no signs of public life uh, became almost the, the, almost the perfect setting for dystopian movies. This is a photograph of an unusually tourist-free Piazza San Marco in Venice. Today in Europe, many of the government's uh, restrictions and rules have been now lifted, and the situation is slowly going back to normal. Um, as many cities have responded to the ongoing pandemic in a fairly fast uh, uh, way, um, the temporary solution adopted by many progressive uh, municipalities, including Paris, for instance, uh, really make us think, made us, made, should make us think that, um, about the benefits and implication on our city and urban life in general in the near future. Some of the solutions adopted by the different municipalities included the opening of temporary bike and road lanes, um, the extension of sidewalk to provide uh, enough room for pedestrians to walk safely while maintaining the recommended physical distancing um, of two meters one to another, and the closure of some of the streets to vehicle traffic. Uh, I am in Paris at the moment. Um, these are photographs I took uh, last uh, Tuesday, which was the official day uh, when, uh, open, uh, when bars and uh, restaurants reopen in France. While it's still possible, it's only possible to have a drink or have a meal outside, um, the, the mayor of Paris has granted uh, permission uh, to the restaurants and bars to gain extra space um, on directly on public realm, on public street, as you can see from this picture, um, allowing and, provi and providing people uh, with, with like uh, enough room to meet their friends safely. So I've been staying in Paris for roughly about four weeks now, and uh, I'm biking every day around the city. The city looks gorgeous. The weather until yesterday was particularly nice as well. And since the uh, public spaces and park has been reopened this week, uh, it has been quite interesting and impressive to see how after many months of lockdown, people are really reclaiming public space and, uh, and the need for social interaction is actually quite real. The mayor of Paris has so far adopted uh, a very pioneering approach in the COVID-19 response and recovery. Um, the municipality has installed 50 kilometers of bike lanes um, in the city with a plan of opening hundreds more in the near future. Really almost like shifting the priority from cars to pedestrian and cyclists and uh, almost like projecting a really good attitude, 
positive attitude towards the possible changes that a city like Paris could face in a post-pandemic scenario. Understanding uh, the um, weaknesses of existing infrastructure, but also the full potential of city transformations or urban improvements is certainly not a new thing. In the mid of uh, 19th century, London was the most populated city in the world with a population growth, uh, exponential population growth uh, due to the Industrial Revolution. In 1854, a cholera outbreak in central London killed uh, over 10,000 people. This gentleman, um, Dr. John Snow, uh, was not particularly uh, popular among his colleagues at the time because he was not quite well convinced about the, the miasma theory, the mainstream my, miasma theory, which, uh, which stated that a cholera outbreak was caused by uh, pollution or simply by bad air. Through what is still considered today a groundbreaking mapping of the casualty in Soho, central London, he managed to identify exactly the source of the outbreak uh, as the public water pump in Broad Street. <clears throat> Proving for the first time that cholera was a disease transmitted by contaminated water. We need, to, we need to keep in mind that at the time, so mid 19th century, uh, wastewater in central London was discharged in the river, which was also the main source of drinking water. A few, few years after, uh, a heat wave hit London in the summer of 1858, which is still remembered today as the Great Stink. Um, the, the river was particularly polluted. And that, alongside with the cholera outbreak, forced lawmakers to not only clean the river, but also to come up with much more drastic and much more durable uh, urban solutions. In 1865, engineers Joseph Bazaget, uh, the head at the time of London's Metropolitan Board of Works, created a sewage network for central London to mitigate the rapid spread of cholera. This is a section showing the first embankment built on River Thames, uh, completed with a tunnel for the district line tube, uh, here on the left. Uh, the new sewage, and uh, above which the new vehicle road was built, aiming at, to re at reducing the traffic congestions uh, in other parts of the town. So this pioneering plan wasn't just including a much needed physical infrastructure to mitigate the um, the cholera outbreak and improved sanitation in a city that it was uh, um, with a such fast growing population. It also included the, the creation of uh, public spaces and garden along uh, the newly completed embankments. Um, probably the, the most known is Victoria Tower Garden located near the parliament, next to the parliament, the picture to the right. Uh, this is really a good example on how an ongoing epidemic has really started shaping the city, um, not only with physical infrastructure, but also with social infrastructure as well. Uh, sociologist Eric Klinenberg has been much reflected on the importance of social infrastructure and its link to community resilience as part of his uh, research that it was published in the heat wave. A book that you see on the right, uh, he understood that the mortality rate during the heat wave that hit Chicago in the summer of 1995 was much higher in neighborhoods with poor or no access to social infrastructure. So people living in vulnerable neighborhoods and uh, inadequate housing have been the most affected by this ongoing pandemic. So how are these extremely dense uh, um, populated and vulnerable context coping with COVID-19. What's the situation in refugee camps or informal neighborhoods? According to Inhabitat, one billion people worldwide, which is roughly one in seven people of the world population, live in informal settlements with a, cut, with a quarter of the world's population with poor access to um, clean, clean and safe water and to sanitation. Informal settlement like slum and refugee camps has been uh, particularly affected by the uh, ongoing pandemic due to several factors. 
uh, most of the Islam dwellers work outside the slums and we then, with a very little saving, um, um, money saving apart, uh, they need to uh, rely on, on going to work on a daily basis. Most Islam dwellers don't have a refrigerator or better, they don't have the space and either they have a continuous access, uh, access to continuous electricity to power the refrigerator. Therefore, they need to go to the market every day uh, to buy fresh food. People live in uh, inadequate and overcrowded housing. We're talking about extended family um, living in between 15 and 25 square meters. Um, additionally, staying at home uh, is putting women and girls at the risk of violence. So these uh, restrictions and rules imposed by local government are, seems to be like pretty impossible to be respected and um, in, in this kind of uh, context. Another key factor to be considered is the high density of the urban fabric. We're expecting the recommended uh, physical distancing is very difficult and, disease, and, uh, and the disease is likely to spread much faster in this type of context. Therefore, uh, having access to open space, public space become absolutely vital. This is probably one of, the, one of the most interesting and best quotes that we find about public space. Public space is not just a nice thing to have, but a basic need for cities. And this is true now more than ever before. Our studio has been working on the public space project for years, as mentioned before, in very vulnerable content, including Haiti, where I've been taking part of the recovery and reconstruction process after the 2010 earthquake or in Lebanon where we work with, um, on a public space project that we just completed to foster, with the aim to foster social cohesion between uh, refugees and Syrian host uh, community. The recent event in uh, the ongoing event in the US and around the world, um, and I'm not talking just about the ongoing pandemic, but also the latest uh, protest uh, against the killing of George Floyd, really clearly demonstrating the urgent need for people to have a space to come together. We at TVA Studio really believe that public space should be a fundamental right for people, should be an op open to anyone, uh, whatever their background, and should be the common ground to promote social inclusion, celebrate the diversity, and to fight any kind of inequalities. I'd like to present here uh, a public space project that we have completed uh, um, a few years, uh, a few years ago. Uh, we are in an informal neighborhood in Haiti. And uh, with the aim, the project was aimed at uh, uh, promoting uh, social inclusion and uh, fostering community resilience. Just to give you a little bit of context about Haiti, in, in Haiti, 75% uh, of uh, of uh, the population living in former neighborhoods, basically three out of four. Um, Cafufe, which is uh, one of the many formal settlements located in the outskirts of the capital, Port-au-Prince, uh, is characterized by extreme poverty. Um, there is, um, with a lack of basic services, such as no access to electricity, to water and sanitation. The urban fabric is quite, uh, is quite densely populated. Uh, private space is predominant and public space is often uh, reduced those only necessary for circulation as we can see in this picture. 2010 was, was a devastating year for Haiti. In January 2010, a 7.0 Richter scale earthquake hit uh, and destroyed completely um, the capital Port-au-Prince and cities around it, killing over 20, uh, 220,000 people and displacing over 1.5 million people. 10 months after, in October 10, uh, 2010, um, an outbreak of cholera was confirmed in 18, killing nearly 10,000 people. Our project is part of like a larger program financed, uh, funded by the American Red Cross and implemented by global communities. Um, which has included, was including uh, um, the retrofit of 500 units, improving sanitation, the provision of uh, street lights, uh, and improvement and upgrade of existing infrastructure. 
And among the different components of the project, we've been assisting in providing the design for three public spaces. So the project I'm about to present is located in the center. It's called the Plasta Pirouge. That's the site uh, right after the earthquake in 2011. The entire neighborhood, Carfoufe, was heavily damaged by the earthquake um, and forced like a lot of people living from the neighborhood to be internally displaced. So the, the empty sites around it has been transformed into a tent city. Um, as you can see, the site is located at the bottom of a hill and uh, it was particularly prone to the risk of flooding, not just in exceptional circumstances, but any, any uh, normal rain, rainy day or rainy, rainy season day, um, the site was completely flooded. So we worked together with the engineers to mitigate not only the risk of flooding, but obviously the consequent possible outbreak of cholera in the area. That's a picture of reconstruction. So we have uh, created a, a central dry well, which was uh, aimed at collecting runoff water from the site and discharge them into an existing channel uh, located further, uh, further down the hill uh, through an connected to that uh, through an overground pipe, as you can see from this diagram. Uh, the proposed design that it was uh, uh, informed by an extensive community engagement process uh, consisted not only of a much needed uh, physical infrastructure to reduce the possible risk for the residents, but also has included a social and an aesthetic component. The center of the project is an amphitheater for 200 people, uh, which is today the largest uh, gathering space in the, in the area. And ultimately with uh, Plasta Pirouge, we wanted to create, uh, we wanted to provide the residents with the pleasure of a public piazza, um, almost creating like a, a communal living room for those people that they live in uh, uh, overcrowded uh, and um, inadequate housing. They don't have a living room in their own place. Um, the design consists in concentric uh, terraces, uh, sloped. Uh, the reason why the, the, we terrace the scheme is uh, it was because we follow the natural topography to reduce the cost of excavation. And the program, the architectural program, which was uh, reviewed with the community, included uh, green spaces, an amphitheater, a uh, seating area to contemplate the, um, the surrounding area and the mountains, you can see the sea from the square and an open air gym, which was very popular, still very popular today. Uh, during construction, uh, we've been working a lot with the um, unskilled workforce, 75% uh, of which comes from the local community. And really the community engagement process helped us from the very beginning of, of the project before even we start lifting our pencil from the drawing table until the very end, especially during construction, we're being co-designed the, pro the project with them. We've been reviewing, in this case, in this picture, we're showing like we review the, um, the patterns as well as the, uh, the, the colors. We have introduced placemaking activities to create a process, process of ownership. We have invited a few renowned artists from AT um, that come to the work with a local uh, foundation uh, called uh, Le Centre d'Art, which is a 75 years old institution that promotes art in uh, uh, an artist in 18 and abroad. And these artists for a couple of weeks have been working together with the youth from the community to create a, a, a 300 meters long uh, mural. As we, we had like a, a, one of the biggest constraints that we had in, in, in to, to consider in the design, it was like, this very long wall, which was a very big and visual constraint, so we transformed that un into an opportunity. And it was very interesting to see like how people really took ownership of the project, not only the youth, but AT went th through um, an extremely painful and long, a year long uh, electoral process at the end of 2016. And uh, during election time, uh, any elevation in, uh, in Haiti, any, any walls, 
or polls that are covered well with electoral polls of possible candidate uh, for president. And what we have seen in um, the happen in this world, we, we could totally see like uh, the, the mark on the wall of few electoral polls, but you also see like there's some other people from the community remove that. Um, right after construction, which was roughly uh, October, November 2016, we decided uh, that internally we wanted to run a post occupancy evaluation. Uh, we had no clients, so we decided that we were setting up our own rules. I was particularly insisting that we needed to take our time to actually evaluate the, um, the space. Reason why it's, uh, it, it, it took like, uh, it's still ongoing, uh, it took about four years now, is because we, for instance, we have planted baby flamboyant, and it takes about two or three years time until uh, the, the, these trees start producing shade. So we had, methodology wise, uh, we have, um, we had adopted different, uh, different ways to engage with people to understand how the space was actually performing. So one-to-one um, -one interviews, um, um, questionnaires, observation of how the social space uh, was working at different times of the day, at different times of the week, uh, the counting, um, the counting uh, of people passing by or staying um, for longer than 30 minutes, uh, divided by gender and age. And then we also like had different focus groups um, with uh, the un underrepresented members of the community, especially the women and the, and the youth and the elderly. One of the, a few things that we really find fascinating um, was uh, one of the things that probably was the most fascinating was like we have uh, understood that there were a couple of students, uh, university students that were coming from all across town um, just because of the, they wanted to find like a quiet oasis where to study. And for me, this is like a way to demonstrate the impact of a very small public space because we are talking about uh, less than 2000 square meter of intervention, but that the impact of this project really helped um, sewing back together the the informal part of the of the city with the formal part of the city. We're still in touch with the members of the community. We receive fun things. We receive pictures of um, community-led events. I think it was a DJ party. Yeah, some some other times it's used for shows. Sometimes other times it's used by the church. And we also receive like uh, flyers, etc. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, it's really interesting to see uh, your perspective and the project in Haiti. And then um, in the later part of the dis discussion, uh, we would like to um, talk with you more about the process and how you work with the community. Sure. Yeah. So we would move on to the next presentation by uh, Memorial Kaitsuma. So I'll introduce her briefly. Uh, she, um, Atlia Bawao is a Tokyo-based firm founded in 1992 by Yoshihalu Tsukamoto and Memorial Kaitsuma. And um, the group's work range, ranges from architectural design to urban research and the creation of public artworks, all of which are produced based on the theory of Behavioral logic, behavioral logic. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. And the practice has designed um, and built houses and public spaces in Japan, Europe, and the United States. And they have publications include pet architecture uh, guidebook, made in Tokyo, graphic autonomy at Lia Bow Wow, behavioral logic, and um, windowscape series. And Tsukamoto is a professor of architecture at Tokyo Institute of Technology and Kai Tuna is an associate professor of architecture at ETH Zurich and the Tsukuba University. Um, welcome. Yeah, please go ahead. I think you might have to unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yes, I know. thank you for your time. I tried to make a presentation. <laughs> and then I think uh, 
And uh, still, I'm not so good at uh, using the Zoom presentation, so I could uh, not manage it perfectly. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no problem and, uh, at all. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yes, that's good to uh, hear what it is. <laughs> and, uh, and then, so that's why so I, I, I bit always a bit uh, frustrating, so how to manage looking uh, your faces and also the presentation together. So well, maybe uh, <clears throat> I, I try to keep uh, this way. Is that okay? Sure. So for if we on a total window, so we always have a problem of, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to manage it. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, maybe it's, it's fine, no? Is it's it great. En enough? That's good side. Okay, good. Looks great. Ah, yes. And I have a, how many minutes I have? So 15 minutes, kind of. As many as you like. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. As much sure. as you no, like. I, I, <laughs> we, no, no, no. I don't, we, want, <coughs> I don't want to have a long one. So, okay. Yes, something like. Okay, good. Um, I think, um, firstly, so I would like to introduce my architectural behaviorology, the theory that uh, was founded the last 10 years uh, because of the, we had a bit uh, uh, long study so, and then uh, practice, but always uh, continues uh, to think about the uh, meaning of form of the architecture and the meaning of the space uh, itself. So, and then, so architectural behaviorology is very good uh, method to what we found so last 10 years to develop further. And uh, behaviorology is uh, always we try to uh, grasp the uh, form behind, so relations so between the other uh, aspects. And then COVID-19, so uh, it's also we could say, so the behaviorology, so the part of the uh, understanding, so how we need to do so. And uh, uh, architectural behaviorology is the uh, object, uh, the form itself, uh, uh, how we could understand. Uh, the first is a nature. My nature means the light, wind, heat, and uh, also material is a timber or stone and so on. And it's related to the, uh, for example, contained the heat and a lot of condition coordinate for the spaces. And also the climate is a very big issue and the human and building, and uh, we try to understand the relationship between the, on them. And uh, around 2000, so my original, it was started in 1991, so uh, made in Tokyo. So, and uh, at that time, so our uh, goal is to uh, illustrate about uh, the uh, Tokyo uh, and uh, through, through the, our observation, but to fix some certain material. So that means uh, we, it will be as a drawing. And also the, we, in this case, uh, we put uh, some name and uh, memo and uh, also the, like uh, some situation plan and uh, uh, photographs on. And uh, we uh, wrapped as this, uh, these contents uh, as a guidebook to uh, show the Tokyo it is. And uh, after, so we try to uh, understand the uh, house uh, design, how did it relates the behavior, uh, what I ex explained so before. So light and heat and people and also the building uh, typology and so on. So the, this book uh, illustrated uh, about the, the, the behavior of the uh, Japanese or well, maybe some include the foreign, so outside of Japan, so houses, but uh, we try to understand uh, the house design, how explained to the, our lifestyle today. And the uh, third one, my, I introduced, uh, uh, this is what we call the commonality study. So uh, it related to the focusing on the public space, how uh, people behave because of the uh, condition of the public space. The, for example, the, if heated the bus in the summer, in afternoon, so late afternoon, so in Copenhagen, uh, it was uh, given the uh, very good uh, um, heat, nice heat for 
uh, radiate a heat from a vast array of the concrete to the people enjoy the long summer, in, even if they have a bit chilly and cold in the uh, air. So, but uh, this kind of so behavior, it's happened uh, also the uh, climate, but also the culture of the uh, area. And also the, um, this, um, but this case we try to explain about the, the typology. But typology always, uh, uh, there is a, a genealogy of the typology. So that's why so we try to bring the, uh, this kind of uh, uh, transformation of the typology uh, as uh, understanding the uh, transformation of the life side itself. And also we uh, did uh, uh, some, um, uh, not only for urban condition, it include more uh, rural condition and the rural condition it's also very important for us to understand to how the rural condition and nature are artificial by the human uh, fact or human uh, business so uh, for example in japan so the very beautiful the cedar tree were uh, planted in the mountain and then so this was sometimes drawn as a Japanese uh, traditional painting as um, by the very famous uh, Japanese uh, painting artist. And, uh, <clears throat> but uh, yes, but kind of this kind of beauty of the Japan also coming from the art, uh, artifact by the human, so with the nature material. So, so that's why, so in this case, so we try to explain how the life and related to the landscape and the so people, the house and also a field and so on. And uh, these interests that we or I uh, try to uh, publish include not only our project, uh, more than uh, like include the other the author or other uh, artist idea uh, as um, the architecture uh, ethnography and uh, we collect uh, over 300 example and selected 42 uh, good very important work what we thought and then so present uh, last 20 years how the uh, our life what changed and um, <clears throat> also that time so we tried to uh, illustrate uh also the in the site and we ask the audience uh to uh draw by themselves when they feel something to draw want to draw so something like so that's i saw the a space underneath uh in the main gallery so uh it becomes uh, the sketch spaces and uh, some of my friends architects draw very beautiful uh, sounding uh, garden so on. and also uh, we did uh, some nice uh, uh, some so workshop with uh, the, my Japanese and Swiss and also Australian students together to make a, a public drawing in uh, Venice and uh, what does it, uh, what is a public drawing? The, it comes uh, originally, so 2011, the Greater East uh, earthquake in Japan. And uh, it was a very, very so uh, hard attack, hardly attacked to the fisherman village, east coast of Japan. And uh, this drawing started for uh, recovery, so presentation uh, to them. Uh, through the architecture magazine and uh, after the disaster now everybody was shocked and we were also big shocked because of the uh, we found uh, how the architecture very so weak and how the village were very weak uh, facing to the nature and uh, that's why so we could not easily to draw by computer at uh, the time so that's why so we try to start to draw by hand to learning 
uh, our history to assemble some uh, uh, imaginary future images. So that is a very, very so starting point of how we start to draw the uh, public drawing. And uh, after, so we realize public drawing is uh, not only for uh, well, recovery issue, maybe so we could uh, make, uh, create uh, the nice, the platform for making an idea for uh, future so public uh, spaces. So that's why, so at first we tested the three hour project by, um, by, by with, with our students together. And uh, this is one result, it's called the Miyashita Park. And uh, uh, it's, but they try to understand the condition through the, the map and also photograph and the visit. And after, so it will really comes to the drawing. And the drawing shows uh, many uh, people streams because uh, the Shibuya area is very, very so crowds and uh, many people coming into the park. So that's why so it's uh, viable so by the crowds in the, the drawings. And uh, 2011, the drawings becomes uh, uh, later. So it's additional so new project because uh, <clears throat> the one uh, we had a uh, one chance to uh, enlarge the drawing eight times uh, uh, from original and uh, we learn also the how the scale makes a difference uh, from uh, uh, original intention and also imaginary becomes expanding to the large scale and um, uh, this is a uh, one uh, also the uh, case study. So we did also the after so we extend our interest for public drawing to the another uh, large uh, public uh, spaces, not designed by us, more designed by this case and the uh, Tange Kenzo. So, and it's very famous uh, building. So the, after the uh, disaster, uh, after the bombing, uh, the and it was um, empty. And then so Kenzo Tange were uh, uh, designed for a uh, new uh, memorial park. And the memorial park were planted many donation tree and also many uh, mm, memorials or uh, symbolic or so some, <clears throat> um, sorry, uh, some statue and so on. So that's why, so, uh, we try to understand what it means, where it comes from, and all the information coming into the, the this public growth. And um, after so this uh, Zurich, uh, sorry, after the, this Venice case, uh, we tried to uh, also the testing the twelve the public uh, spaces. But the interesting is also the like uh, Venice were well, very famous. Well, drawing so because of the many uh, Venice merchant asked to the a painter to draw the some uh, important moment uh, for them so that's why so the still this drawing was exhibited in the museum in Venice so we visited this museum to understand uh, to what's happened in the Venice before and then <clears throat> Uh, students can visit uh, today's Venice uh, public space and to understand what's the difference and what is the uh, similarity and so on. And this is, uh, yeah, so the old uh, painting and today's condition with the students group. And uh, we discuss also the how we could draw the public drawing. For example, first is observation is a very, very important part uh, to understand the resources and the behavior and the changes uh, from history and today. And also <clears throat> the uh, drawing is also the needs a theme for understanding or uh, illustrate to the clearly the some, uh, well, my students, uh, my observation or uh, idea of the public space. 
and also the anger is uh, uh, should be discussed by uh, in the 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 group because uh, the uh, each uh, perspective uh, drive the different meanings and also history of the perspective related to the uh, uh, founding uh, circumstance. So. Uh, and also after we did the Rome, and uh, also Roma case, we found a bit different. So because uh, originally, so um, we found that Venice is a much smaller square, but the Roma case, maybe so uh, three times, four times, we could find a large scale of uh, a square. So that means uh, that Roma, it becomes a more political city and uh, they have a big uh, power. Uh, and also more, uh, they try to make a contrast to the dense and open space uh, as a representation of the power. And after, so we did the Zurich, and the Zurich case is also interesting. So the original city were very medieval, so the texture, but uh, they turned down the wall, and this wall uh, material uh, becomes to Zurich claimed on the original channel to be a main street. And also the new spot surround well, becomes a lot of uh, space for public uh, space and buildings. And we point, uh, select the, this uh, uh, old Veduta uh, from the Zurich. And uh, uh, students also uh, the draw for it to understand the today's a condition in the history. And um, we present always to, uh, ex for the exchanging of the idea, uh, result of the drawing, and to create uh, some kind of a platform for uh, future uh, public space design. And uh, this uh, methodology of the design uh, drawing is always related to the teaching, but also the in integrate our uh, uh, design. So, but today I have uh, no time to show the design. So, uh, how you utilize uh, the drawing in the project. But the most of the case we test it to the more kind of public involvement or like a uh, fisherman's village recovery to communicate the, the local people so on. So I think a drawing uh, would be also a very important uh, platform for public and common uh, in, in a discussion. And uh, this kind of architecture behaviorology, so we try to uh, create uh, some uh, new hybrid situation because uh, last century and uh, this century, uh, society and also building states were very industrialized and also the... <laughs> sorry, my, my, my family a bit have a party, so that's why sorry. sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's why, so, um, so we need to, um, uh, yes, and we need to the, think about uh, so how industrial society were not so, uh, but not so, so, but maybe so we, we, we try to beat the reverse to the really so 20th century industrial society. We come to beat more close to the uh, original or traditional support, including the, as a, as a, as a, as a, yes, his, my, as a, as a, my culture, I think. <clears throat> and uh, this is a uh, one drawing I made, so for architecture uh, ethnography book by, published in also another um, uh, German magazine, so Articles. And, uh, but this case also the 19th century uh, Earth, and the 20th century Earth and 21st century Earth. So how it uh, becomes different. I think the entire so surface were uh, 20, 19th century, so uh, more 
somehow so core and isolated and the 20th century becomes more uh, connected and the 21st century so how we could do so this is more like uh, future my images but uh, more 40th century and uh, uh, different uh, uh, center coming out on the surface to with a network and so on and then uh and then same time same day of this publishment and opening so the switzerland also becomes a lockdown so and uh, our school Eteha, was also locked down and uh, we could not enter after the school so and uh, we our my Swiss life uh, becomes also very different and uh, uh, i started to make a small so sketch of how we lived uh, at that moment <clears throat> my it is this is a more personal sketches uh, and uh, my i start to call this one so uh, corona or covid 19 so behaviorology and also the architecture ethnography uh, on today and uh, also like um, um, study people start to beat the different behavior for example they don't want to have a shake hand so instead of shake hand they start to shake feet or i don't know we uh, try to make a distance and as much as possible for a uh, zoom presentation so on so so all things are different so that i try to uh explain with the drawings and also the uh, in japan so somehow so we have uh, some rule of make a line so on the uh, on the taping so in uh, in uh, like uh, for example platform so in uh, for, uh, it's uh, before the corona so but uh, switzerland there is in, uh, no behavior so uh, this kind of things so, so that's uh, but after so the uh, many uh, supermarket and also like um, uh, post office, they started to new rules. So, so that's why so I try to uh, remark so, uh, by my drawing. And also the some pizza uh, shops, uh, they have already nice uh, counter. So in front of the, the uh, staff and the guests. So it somehow looks very good work. Uh, for the keeping the distance. And after, so I come back to Japan the end of March uh, because uh, the old school are remote. So that's why so I started to teach uh, from Japan to uh, Switzerland. And uh, what I started to so parallel, so uh, I start to make a uh, bread because bread is very helpful <laughs> and also very interesting and also understanding how it works my other behavior maybe and uh, also the, we have um, every lunch and breakfast start to eat outside but we used to use also the good timing but uh, now the house and the of Bauer, so we have also the uh, veranda and also roof garden, so but it's also very useful uh, for the new life and also old life too. And we walk a lot uh, every morning uh, to visit the shrine in the Tokyo and also park around. So it's also very helpful and also now I see many people walk in the morning around six o'clock and so well, i think um I, my new kind of new style of the life and um, this is the final so research now we uh, try to do so <clears throat> in eth so uh, i try to ask my students or some uh, architects to how they do work or study so in the uh, in their house and how they make a rule and how they change the 
um, layout of the furniture and so on. So <laughs> well, maybe so it might be helpful for the future. So that's why so I started to ask them to draw their uh, situation. And uh, but in this summer, so we will make um, some uh, drawing workshop in the pandemic situation with the students. And uh, maybe we could collect uh, some uh, images. Uh, this is also not public, but more kind of common so, uh, knowledge by each individual, so uh, challenging. So uh, I really looking forward to do uh, this workshop uh, in the summer. So thank you very much. Uh, this is the last slide uh, by me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Iwana, Yuan. If you wanna uh, navigate through the discussion, but um, I think we can start with uh, some of our questions. Yeah. I. I. I'm very impressed by Momoyo's bread making. <laughs> um, so some of the question that is um, um, both to you, uh, Momoyo and Andrea, is that um, it's just a comment and question, I think. That, well, since uh, both um, Momoyo and Andrea, well, Atelier Bawao and uh, Eva Studio works so closely with communities, and and I was thinking, how would you define good public space? And this is something I pondered when I worked in Ghana. Uh, one of the mentors told me that it is important to develop a sense of community ownership. That is something that Andrea just mentioned in the presentation. But when creating a you know, it's important to create the sense of, or develop a sense of community ownership when creating a place for them, as opposed to providing a space for them. And, you know, so I was wondering, when you work with communities so closely, how would you position yourself when, um, when you start working with them? For example, are you considering yourself architect or, a community member and what's important when you start conversations with them and I see the in Momoyo's case is um, the drawing take um, is playing an important role to start a conversation and then start envisioning something that is um, needed in a space for example but if you had some thoughts on that, I'd like to hear. Um, should I start? How do we go? Hmm? Um, yeah. When I start uh, relating to, uh, to a community, uh, I, I don't think it's fair to say that I feel like, like a member of community. I'm the architect, I'm the professional. The way we uh, kind of like break eyes um, during the first engagement session is like I introduce myself as as an architect I explain my skills that in some cases are not always obvious and they're not even obvious like all the time in developing countries but especially because I'm an architect designing public space which is still you know we're always working on the boundaries of what architecture for me at least it should be and uh, <clears throat> The way I, I, I introduce the community to the communities, like you are guys, the experts from the area, in a place like an informal neighborhood in Haiti, where there, there is no maps available at the municipality to find out about the, the flood risk areas or like other type of like uh, services, etc. Is that that type of information, that type of data only needs to come from people for the community. It's literally one by one, we go around the community in what we call transit walks, and we start mapping the different uh, uh, site-specific issues. But that needs to come from the community. They are the ones who can tell us whether uh, an, in, an initial idea might be preventing from working, or whether they need to explain like in further details, what is like 
perception of safety in the area from them. Then we need to start hearing the different voices. That type of like engagement process, which I'm not trying to romanticize, it's very difficult to talk to people. I think it's very important if it starts read at the beginning, even before we start even thinking about the design. It's very important to start from the beginning because it helps uh, developing um, understanding and addressing the urgent needs and priorities from people and also like that should later on develop start developing into like building like almost like a community communal aspirations among the different residents and build that type of like ownership process thank you yeah, um, yeah and i yes. wonder like what are some of the okay. challenges you found during this process like what is the most challenging part the most uh, several um <laughs> in a Sometimes I really felt like that there was a, a bigger problem in communicating the messaging through the community. Uh, we tried with architectural drawings, we tried with uh, little models, and sometimes it was very difficult for people to understand uh, like an architectural plan. So, so even at some point we have projected on the wall and like a 3D Rhino model, which I thought at the beginning would never work, but everybody really started understanding like seeing in 3D, rotating the model, et cetera, et cetera. So communicating the initial design ideas is, is very, 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 it's quite difficult, I find it. Um, later on in the, in the process, uh, I think the architects, at least in, an architect working in an informal neighborhood, um, should really always keep the door for communication with the community open. We understand like, the implication of changing the design in due course and in due course, I mean, like doing construction, but like we've been like several times we've been, we had like a community member. So they came to us and they said like, shouldn't put the stairs here because this design will prevent uh, my neighbors to build this house. And he didn't have the funds available when we started the design. He, and normally like the way it goes in informal settlements, whenever people have some money available to go to dig up the foundation um, they built uh, the poor foundation maybe six months after the they build the walls another six months after whenever the, the resources are, are available they build like a piece and obviously we need to take in consideration of these urban dynamics or like people dynamics personal dynamics in the design and be like and reflect on that and eventually change in the design and be flexible with that but this this is like definitely one of the biggest challenges and really probably sorry last thing probably it's like the most difficult part which takes like a long time and is not always successful is really trying to build like a communal conversation where everybody shares the idea at the same time and they start really like acting as a community the individual needs are always like at least at the beginning are always like extremely prominent and the idea of like thinking collectively is it's is extremely extremely difficult and to build that it's the community engagement must be when i'm talking about extensive community engagement <clears throat> it mm -hmm. should be something that it needs to reflect on that Do you have any thoughts, Momoyo? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, yeah. May, yes. Uh, basically, so we we uh, in in my presentation, maybe so there is a two way. So one way, for example, made in Tokyo, is uh, I'm living in Tokyo and. Uh, I just observe my neighborhood. <laughs> so that is a very so simple. Um, we, I'm also the part of the community or in the community. That is mm -hmm. one thing. And then another drawing sometimes uh, we are also out, uh, outsider. And in that case, uh, like, um, uh, I think this outsider case is also Sometimes it's very good, so because 
um, only inside, uh, uh, it's a bit difficult to uh, re ma see the honest reality, kind of. So, you know, so mm -hmm. the, that's why so the outsider could uh, grasp grasp uh, more easily to what's the difference from others. This uh, some target area. So that's why so outsider uh, could have a bit wider vision, and mm -hmm. then. We could push or a uh, bit, uh, you know, the, we communicate with the local, and then so local so started to excavate their understanding. What is the strange or what is the particular? Or what is the special things? And then so this loop becomes a, a better understanding themselves to uh, to the condition. And then, but this is a very simple part. But uh, after, so like uh, 2011, uh, once village we started to work for, well, we were more part of the membership of the, these activities. But because once I started to, uh, well, for example, well, Fisherman Village is 2011 case also, but also the before, that uh, Kanazawa uh, case, uh, we used to work for Machia, abandoned Machia, to renovate with uh, our students and also our colleagues together. Then in that case, we ourselves uh, as artists, at that time, so art artist uh, exhibition, so the other times so we intervene the building by ourselves. And uh, this case is a bit more like uh, well, insider outsider situation. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, we are also um, a part of the member of the project. So mm -hmm. uh, it's more like a kind of club. So membership uh, mm -hmm. is, um, and also we need to, but we pay also <laughs> for after, so to the, a coordinate the project also. The like uh, more mm -hmm. we were involved as a, one of the project membership members. Mm -hmm. So that that is the thing. So, and then uh, we are starting to train uh, this kind of uh, uh, situation. And then so 2011. So now also I I'm also part of the member of the running the project in the Momonora village. And also, uh, well, I rent a house and also I do a lot. <laughs> and But it's also very fun, so very nice for me to uh, part of them. And uh, also now the, we are, Tribawa also working for the one uh, Kamogawa, uh, Kamanuma, mm -hmm. so stepping uh, rice terrace. Ah, uh, Junko-san, you know very well, so. <laughs> yes, but, I was uh, part of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mm -hmm. so you are part of this. But uh, also we and also the Yoshiharu now started to work more harder with their students. And uh, I think um, but this is also interesting. So to uh, the kind of new or I don't know, old mm -hmm. idea of the architect or designer. So. so mm -hmm. But it might be a might minimize the number of the project for architects, but uh, we could get more interest <laughs> or, or we could learn more deeply. So that is uh, our maybe interests or more. Uh, it's also the very important uh, uh, our research method, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was interesting to hear that um, coming from outside of the community, may help expand the, their vision or their understanding of their space. I thought that was an interesting uh, notion. Um, and we are getting a lot of questions from the audience. Yeah, from the audience. Oh, yes. like, and I wonder if you guys want to unmute yourself and read your question out to make this a, really into a lively discussion. I found sometimes in the Zoom mm -hmm. meetings, people are just quietly sitting there and not really having a lot of interaction. Now we're talking about public spaces, talking about um, social interaction. I really hope you can unmute yourself and 
Margaret, I'm, I'm not sure if you're here. Would you like to do that? Or I can, I can read your question I, out. Oh. Yeah, that's a good, good point. This okay. Zoom okay. itself is a social infrastructure, I consider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she's asking me to read it out. Okay, in okay. your view, would the public space intervention approach and methodology to mitigate a pandemic be different, whether in rural area, in a refugee camp, or in an urban city? So um, I guess she's asking, um, would there be any difference in how you approach a certain design, um, Andrea, or anyone in the audience if you want to jump in? I think we are doing this conversation like uh, for the past two months with both of you. I think that in the way we should respond to, at least in, in places like Paris or London or the US, where we should respond to in public spaces to COVID and to the ongoing pandemic is nothing particularly exceptional. It's like the ongoing pandemic, like the, the measures and the, the solutions that we need to provide, they're like almost common sense type of architectural approach like uh, thinking about uh, what from where the wind blows like uh, shade uh, mitigate uh, hot climate um, providing like um, a shelter place rather than uh, rather than like uh, maybe like thinking about how we distancing like the benching for instance making benches long enough to actually host to people at the same time that it can be, they can respect like social distancing rather than creating like a, a footpath, um, like around around a public park that are wide enough to actually avoid that, that continuous congestions among people. I've seen like various type of design solutions. I think there are a lot of them, they are very self-serving. I don't think they're really tackling the, the, the crisis. I don't think we need to come out with the, a groundbreaking ideas to to actually provide the space for people to maintain social interaction during this pandemic. The solutions are like quite easy. We have the infrastructure to do so. We de definitely need to valorize much in a much better way our public realm, our public parks in places like London, in Paris, in Italy for sure, in a place like an informal settlement and. Uh, <clears throat> And the refugee camps is obviously very different because there is a total lack of open spaces. There is a problem with the land tenure. Uh, there is a problem with like a literally available public space. And if there are, normally it's like where people normally don't want to build because they are always prone to the risk of flooding and or landslide or name it. It's quite important, but I think it's quite important that like the different organization and, and I've seen like in the course of the year, I've seen like more and more like international uh, NGOs, international organization are really paying so much more attention towards the public space, which is a good thing, but much more needs mm -hmm. to be done. Mm -hmm. And it takes absolutely nothing. Uh, probably almost, uh, I've read the second question from Christina mm -hmm. Marsh. Um, it takes, uh, it takes not much to actually uh, linking uh, what is seen like a, a, an urgent infrastructure project, like for instance, what is called in, in, uh, in technical terms, like a disaster risk reduction project, like uh, retaining walls, mm -hmm. big retaining walls, big canals, big, uh, all the type of like heavy uh, physical and expensive physical infrastructure they aim to mitigate the various risks in the air. It takes absolutely mm -hmm. like maybe 10% of the overall cost to build up a beautiful public space on top and providing people with a social component. Mm -hmm. Well, I thought, um, you know, when it, well, we were chatting before, but uh, when it comes to the design of building, we talk about the enough ventilation, enough amount of light and those things to, to deal with the situation of quarantine, um, those things are things that, that we need anyway to have a better indoor air quality, for example. But I, th I think I was contemplating the idea that this experience 
the experience of pandemic may change the way we see the public space and that's why this uh, whole conversation started um, so I think well one of the questions I had in mind is that need for social connection well I, wanted, I, I was moving into the next question, but if anybody had a th thoughts on that, um, the previous question, I'm sorry, I'm just moving into the next question, segueing into that. But uh, what I was gonna ask is that the need for social connection is not new, um, and it just uh, became more visible um, due to pandemic, for example. And for example, it, it seems similar, analogous to the fact that uh, good indoor air quality is obviously important, but the need for it became more obvious, visible, when we discovered sick building, uh, sick building syndrome, for example. So how do you think you can, we can talk about the importance of social connection in the future? Uh, meaning the spaces that uh, facilitate social interactions and we were talking about this before but for instance when we talk about the importance of good indoor air quality we have enough data to present it why it's important yeah. but when it comes to public space then would our experience of this pandemic be enough ground to justify uh, the value of public space or the good public space? Yeah, especially right now, it's very, uh, you see a lot of uh, presentations use a lot of data um, to um, justify a lot of the design moves, but for a lot of um, these kind of uh, outdoor spaces, public spaces, it's, it's going to be a very organic process and it's very hard to, um, it feels very, very far-fetched to like put a, a lot of uh, quantitative um, data to justify something we, we all know are important. And like, do you think this um, pandemic or the ongoing um, uh, protests or anything else would, um, would inspire you how, how you would present things to the clients or to the community or um, in your future practices? Anyone? <laughs> I think maybe one, one, uh, yeah, maybe so one more. I think uh, the public space, of course, important. That is also very important issue. But also the in Japan, we also the started to discuss about the decentralization, so kind of. So, but then we go to the rural race. So I think. Uh, density uh, more, not so much dense areas. Mm -hmm. So in the case, they don't need to, well, more kind of public space, but not uh, like a vacant in the density. So it's more different uh, uh, meaning. So like uh, also the <clears throat> a rural area so is, has a more uh, business, uh, like agriculture business, but also there is a many, many side uh, uh, substance so there is so that's why so they can uh, enjoy so more wider so aspect in the life uh, mm -hmm. with uh, more distance I think <laughs> and mm -hmm. I think uh, maybe uh, I, I'm just curious uh, because of the, the in America so US have uh, yeah, of course, uh, some city are very central, so very dense city, but also the, you have a many, many nice rural countryside. So mm -hmm. I think, uh, I'm, uh, for example, Japanese case, now the many young generation uh, start to think, move out from Tokyo somehow to reduce the density and also keep some more quality of the life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, also, that everything now could be a remote, and also uh, side they could do also side business or I don't know side side uh, hobby or new community activity around uh, the business. So by remote, so that's why so uh, it's much easier to uh, double or triple or 
or different the multiple the uh, social social uh, what you call Junko san says social uh, connection social connection mm -hmm. yes yes something like mm -hmm. no, but uh, maybe I know central social connection is also a bit uh, problematic for me so like a multiple or a different layer so how we could more uh, holy social connection if mm -hmm. we could create so that might be um, important to avoid to the main central public space Mm -hmm. But uh, what 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 uh what do you, I'm very curious about the discussion in the US. So what, mm -hmm. what you are doing? In your case, oh, oh go ahead. Sorry. Uh yeah, I, I was just reading uh Betsy's uh uh comment. It's really I was just thinking about like uh the 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 society and the and the the mindset of. Uh, people in different countries may be different, and she's talked. Uh, she's mentioning um, the the curation process at a museum, and I wonder, would you want to talk about it and maybe answer Momoyo's question? Would you mind? Um, well, I should I should say that I come from um, a science and children's museum background, not a curator driven background, mm -hmm. so. Um, the way we develop exhibits is very much like what Andreas was talking about. Um, we do something called front end, front end evaluation. We bring people in and I did an exhibit called City Science, which we collaborated with a professor in urban planning at University of Massachusetts and had people designing their ideal neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. We tried having people draw and mm -hmm. it was a disaster um, because most, <laughs> because all we did was uncover um, every peop people's anxiety mm -hmm. about how they can't do art. And so we ended up giving people magnets that had pictures of all of the different features they could have in an ideal neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And they had a metal um, cooking sheet and they had to design their ideal neighborhood and they were given constraints and then we collected that data um, and we had a number of things about urban heat islands and urban biodiversity and asked people to redesign their neighborhoods when they saw how their designs impacted things um, and we did some research in developing the exhibit into whether people had different answers if they were urban rural or suburban um, and mm. creating different soundscapes and things um, and I just I don't know, I've been dying to take the exhibit around the country to see how people <laughs> compare. But, you know, we had six year old children with their grandparents discussing mm. cluster zoning and, and putting a school at the edge of their neighborhood because they knew that there was a neighborhood near them that didn't have a good school. Um, so I, I see this yearning for people to get involved in equitable design. And this was, many years ago. Um, so I think there's this opportunity for the, the, psych, the sort of sociology-backed um, exhibit mm. development methods that I think really mirror what you are doing. Um, so I just, I'll, I'll put a couple of links in here. One's, uh, yeah, there's a, there's a place great. called, um, the Exploratorium in San Francisco has something called the Studio for Public Spaces which um, has been collaborating, sorry, I have a cat, um, <laughs> has been collaborating with the city of San Francisco planning department for many years. And they do projects all around about STEM, so science, technology, engineering, and math interactives to get social engagement going. Um, mm -hmm. Whereas the city science project, we were more focusing on getting people of all stripes involved in thinking about sustainable future cities and sustainable future communities. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, I just, I think there's this untapped marriage that hasn't quite happened yet that, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd love to share. So I'll, I'll put two That's of these great. in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah please. Um, yes, thank yeah. you. Yeah, it sure. could be very interesting to see. Yeah. You know, I was thinking nowadays we are communicating through Zoom and these interactive discussion, like physically being in the same space and draw together will be very difficult to 
replicate in Zoom zone, Zoom space. I wonder if we, um, you know, if we try, would it be you know, possible? Can we draw together through Zoom? Yeah, yeah, you can. And I think um, a lot of the conversation really reveals the truth that for a lot of those uh, community projects, designers are really uh, being in a position as an agent because we know how to draw, we have the expertise about um, how to put things together. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and it's really not a product uh, for, um, it's not really an end product. It's always like a process, the process for yes. such a, such a, um, um, for, for such kind of project, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there were a couple of questions. Uh, no, one. Yeah, Betsy, thank you for sharing the links. And yes, thank you. Yeah. Um, is there any other questions or any other comments? Please feel free to jump in and talk to, Perhaps. yeah. Well, probably it's almost 10. Yeah. So I think okay. we should wrap up this wrap meeting. Up. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. yeah, it was very quick and it was a lot of information. And thank you so much uh, again for the participation, Andrea and Momoyo, connecting from France and Japan. Thank you. You are and everyone uh, for organizing this again. <laughs> The audience as well, thank you for joining in the yeah. US. It's uh, from 8.30 in the morning. Um, the discussion certainly uh, was very uh, interesting and helpful to think more about the public space. Um, so we truly appreciate your time. Yeah, so I just post a link uh, for a post-event survey. So we want to understand um, the, uh, what, what kind of job you do and what kind of topics you're interested in so we, in the future we can uh, learn from the audience like we can we can organize better because right now we cannot see your face and we we cannot have like real conversations so please really take the time to take the survey and thank you for joining us on this Friday morning and enjoy the weekend Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank bye you. bye. All right. Thank I'm you. Going to... Thank you. All right. So who is here? I am going to stop I'm the here. recording. Yeah. Mm -hmm.